But something I noticed through watching your starts this year, and I got to say, you're one of my favorite pitchers just to watch in all of baseball. You can probably find it on my Twitter when I'm just retweeting all your stuff. But watching your starts is the implementation of the nasty cutter, which you used a ton in 2021. And it was next to unhittable when you ride it into lefties at the plate. And what it reminds me a lot of, Nestor, is Dallas Keuchel's cutter in his prime. When was it apparent to you that the cutter was one of your best pitches? You know, it's funny you say that because when, uh, obviously through my minor league career, uh, when I started with the Yankees, I didn't have a cutter. I know. Um, and and I, went, I went to the DR to play winter ball. And uh, one of my good friends now, uh, the Sp- Spain, he's now in uh, Korea pitching. But, you know, he had a ton of a ton of seasons here in the big leagues with the Marlins and the Padres and the White Sox. And he's like, man, why don't you throw a cutter? I said, I, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to grip it. So, he, you know, he taught me a few things and I kind of picked up on it. And, you know, the cutter is like a fastball, just, you know, with a different grip, like a, just the grip does the work. Um, and then in 19, when I was messing around with it, I was able to pick uh, CC Sabathia's mind about it. Mm. Um, and obviously, you know, CC is, you know, what well, he doesn't need a, he, he, he doesn't need a, <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, yeah, we, we kind of grip it the same and, and obviously he had to reinvent his game and, and his cutter was, was one of his most dominant pitches, Absolutely. you know, when he wasn't throwing 97 and, uh, and, you know, I, I took that and, and this year, like I said, my velo went up on my fastball. So everything ticked up a little bit more too. So now my cutter wasn't wasn't 84 85 now it's 87 88 you know and that and that, that played a huge role with with that kind of movement that i was having that's pretty awesome because i mean cc that that cutter really helped extend his career because he used to just blow it exactly by it. but exactly. then he had to learn you know relearn a little bit how to be more finesse like and and that's that's pretty cool to uh i would have never guessed that i would have never made that connection that's really awesome um yeah so going all the way back though you talk about how you you pick a little bit from each guy along the way. And I think that's a, a really common thing from, you know, players who are in your position is you, you be a sponge and you get a little bit from everybody going all the way back to high school at Hialeah high, uh, you know, in Miami, you were, you know, the same school at the same school as Gio Gonzalez who graduated several years prior. Yeah. He would go back a lot, was very involved with Hialeah high. And that was someone that was a mentor to you as well, right? Uh, what did Gio mean for you early in your career? Because we're going to get into it. You weren't always a pitcher, really, until the end no. of your high school career. Uh, I was always a pitcher. I just didn't pitch in high school my first two years. Okay. Uh, number one, because, you know, baseball in Miami is a little different because we play year-round. And a lot of guys get blown out, you know, by their high school coaches because of the competition and they want to win and stuff like that. So it's not the same of, you know, playing three or four months and blow, then blowing it out. You know what I mean? We play all year. So my dad was like, hey, you know, I don't really want you to pitch. I don't want you to, you know, hurt your arm. And, and honestly, at the time, I didn't think, you know, I was going to get drafted by anybody. I was just I was just playing baseball, number one, because I loved it. And number two is because I wanted need, I needed a scholarship because my parents couldn't pay for, a, you know, for a school. So but it all came, you know, to life when when Gio came and and. And I started, I started, I started, I, I tried to do what Gio was doing in the big leagues in high school. Um, you know, to, to that one time we had that conversation and I told him, man, I, I wish I could be like you one day. And he's like, he's like, don't, don't try and be like me. Don't, don't try and be Gio Gonzalez. Try and be Nestor Cortez. And, and, and it really stuck with me all the way because, you know, through minor leagues, I've, I've heard people say, man, I wish I was, you know, uh, Randy Johnson or Kurt Chilling or Roger Clemens, you know, and those guys are, are untouchable, basically. <laughs> you yeah. know, it, it's it's really hard to be one of those guys. Uh, you just got to be the best version of yourself. And, and you know, wh- when he told me that, it, 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 you know, it just it clicked on me and, and I and I stay with that, uh, you know, for the rest of my life. I'm going to have that for, for the rest of my life. And and if and if I can tell anybody younger than me when they get, you know, tell me one of those comments, you know, I, I hope to say the same. And and just on that same point, do you have any other words of advice? Because we have a lot of high school players, college players, coaches that listen to this podcast. And you've just had such an incredible journey from high school now to the major leagues through so many different teams, so many different coaches, so many different amazing influences. Is there something that you wish you could have told your high school self now that you know? 
You know what? I, I, when I was in high school, like I said, when I was in high school, I had no idea what the draft was. I had no idea what a scout, what a scout was. Um, I, I had no idea. You know, I, we just played the game because we played baseball. That's and, and that's that's how I I you know going back and thinking that like man, if I if I pitched freshman and sophomore year, I probably could have prepared myself a little better to maybe throw harder or maybe you know have my my pitches you know, a lot better or command, you know, my secondary better. Because out of high school, really all a high schooler has is a fastball, yeah. you know. The, the, the high schoolers that get drafted, uh, you know, since forever, it's because they throw 90 plus, you know. It's not because they throw 83 and command their curveball. Mm -hmm. So, so I like if I was talking to myself in high school, I'd be like, I would, I would, you know, I would, I mean, there's guys getting homeschooled right now and 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 going to the gym at 9 a.m. You know what I mean? And then going to a physical therapist at 12 and then going to their baseball practice at three. So like that, that's serious right there. You know, and when you and when you're a kid that has a lot of promise, you need to you need to focus on those things, obviously. You know, but like I said, I, I didn't have that and I didn't know my parents didn't know either. It's like until until I met Gio and Gio kind of like led the way led the way and once I got drafted you know he kind of told me how, how things were done and how things need to be uh for me to get to the next level you talk about getting drafted you were selected in the 36th round out of high school and uh at what point did you decide to you know potentially sign and go or go play in college and continue to build yourself up because you started pitching more at the end of your high school career and I started pitching more and more and, and showing you know, that you could do this. Cause uh, as far as, as I, I know, cause my, my uncle coached you in high school, you were a right fielder for a lot of the time. Right. I mean, like you, yep. you played, you probably thought you were going to hit in college. Right. I mean, at what point did you realize you were going to pitch in college? And then when did you decide maybe, okay, I should sign and go play pro ball. I have a follow-up question in regards to this too, that might catch you by surprise. Um, so, so like, yeah, like you said, I, I played right field and hit first, uh, my four years of, of high school. Um, and it wasn't until my junior year where I started pitching, you know, for the high school, I was pitching, you know, travel ball and here and there and 16 and under and 15 and under, but, um, I didn't start pitching to my junior year and that's, you know, junior year, I was, I don't know, 82 to 84 topping out 85, 86, maybe. And then uh senior year i started working out uh you know not for baseball just because i you know i wanted wanted to feel good and look good uh because <laughs> i live in miami <laughs> obviously and um and you know one thing led to the other and i got stronger my legs got stronger my arm got stronger and and i went to a showcase i remember in 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 fall of my senior year um and i topped out 90 i'm like wow this isn't like i i couldn't believe it and, and then scouts were handing, you know, my dad, uh, like, you know, those letters they give out to your questionnaire to fill out, to, to know about you and know more about you and stuff like that. And, and, you know, when the regular season came around, I was like, holy crap, there's, there's scouts in my games. You know, there's, there's people with like radar guns. Every time I pitch, you know, I've had seven, eight, 10, 12 scouts out there every time I pitched. And I'm like, what's happening? Um, and it wasn't until then that I realized that like, Okay, maybe I could be a two-way player in college, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tony of yourself. You can be Otani. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I actually got the scouting report from Carlos Marti that I know is someone that was really important to you too. And I'd love to hear some thoughts on on you know yeah. his impact on you. Uh, but Carlos Marti, you know, at the time was who convinced you know the Yankees to take you in the draft. And one of the things that stood out the most to me, not only that he was spot on about everything about you um when it says level of confidence in this report he said and i quote i would put my house on it obviously you know you go back with marty and, and i mean what does it mean to you to hear that from carlos marty former scout of the yankees that he would put his freaking house on your success and again i mean he would have had two houses now so pretty darn cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, he followed my high school career. Uh, he knew I was a gamer. He knew, um, you know, I knew how to win. Uh, you know, I was a first batter. I, I would, I would hit, I would play right field. I would, 
I would play first, I would play set. Like, it, it didn't matter where you put me. I, you know, I was gonna, even if I wasn't really good at it, but I, I was going to try my best and give my best. Um, you know, and I, and I appreciated that, that, that he went out on a limb and, 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 on and, and said that, you know what I mean, uh, about me. Because uh, it, speak, it speaks volumes, you know. And, and, and I remember that day like it was yesterday. We went, we went to Tampa, and I, I went to throw a, a live VP. The last day of <clears throat> the last day that a player can sign with in, through the draft, which was July twelfth, the, the the draft was the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth, I believe, and you had a month to decide whether you were going to go to college or sign the professional contract. And I waited to the last day to go to Tampa and uh, sign that contract. And uh, you know, everybody was, I, you know, I was, I was a high schooler facing minor league guys, and they were all late. And they were all, you know, miss hitting the ball and hitting foul balls and stuff like that. So, you know, these guys, I feel like they got to give a lot of credit to Carlos Martí because of that reason. Because, uh, you know, I, I showed up and 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 I I made him look good, you know. <laughs>